I'm going to talk about band ring polishing. And uh, if you refer to your notes or the handouts, describe you the step-by-step -step checklist for polishing a band ring, this should be your safe and helpful guide. And we'll go through here step-by-step. -step. And it's my hope that you follow this closely because polishing is the most critical thing that we do when it comes to jewelry and what you do and the choices you make and the tools you use will dictate the quality of your finish and it's pretty easy a word of warning to really screw up your ring if you don't take caution now I have here my rings that come out of the that you receive back from the teacher and it looks like this here's a couple of rings on here band rings so first of all clamp it in the vise you're going to remove this remove the sprues from your project now one mistake that's commonly made and it's one of those dummy mistakes is never clamp your project always clamp the piece that's going to be recycled in this case the sprue button. I have myself a hacksaw and I'm going to carefully cut and remove my ring there's one already done now here's my ring here and if you look there's my remnant from my sprue button that's the first thing that I'm going to address now while I have my ring off here I'm also going to inspect it and I'm going to look for any imperfections from the casting process or air bubbles and if I look here you can see a couple tiny little points here which are air bubbles or remnants of them those are going to take extra care and hopefully they're not going to obscure the design and here's an example of the other ring with the sprue button right there and you can see a couple small imperfections on the casting now I'm here at this the course buffer and I'm going to use the left wheel and I've got my eye protection on. I understand how this machine's going to work, and I'm going to remove the remnant of the sprue. And if you can look, it's blended nice and evenly, and there's no sign of the sprue. Make sure you don't put flat spots in your project because this is damage if you do. Yeah, I'm going to use a, a die grinder to do the inside. That's the next step. I'm going to re attach it, slide, push, release, grab my ring, and I'm going to use a large one here, large as coarse. I'm going in a circular pattern and I'm checking occasionally have a look inside and sometimes I switch if it gets I'm going to the second one because it gets hot from the friction once I have finished with this die grinder the medium or the coarse one I'm going to switch it over grab the other one which is a red handled one which has got a smaller abrasive wheel and that's for fine finishing. Remember we want to have a uniform finish on the inside and that looks good. Oops. I'll grab the other one. Now if you see any imperfections that are in there that are deep we might not be able to take them out and because it's gone your finger fits inside and it's not visible we might leave it as is located behind the small lathe on the on the north side of the shop you'll find these buckets here this is where we recycle our emery cloth and our sandpaper so you should be able to find a piece here that's suitable for polishing your ring now I'm at the metal lathe I'm going to slide my ring on the mandrel that's in the machine and I am going to polish the outside now the first thing I'm going to do is I've got myself a sanding sponge. This is a fine sanding sponge. And I periodically stop and check. Now I'm going to go through the procedure and use the fine sanding sponge and then go to 
yellow backed 400. This is emery cloth. And then I'm going to go 600. And then probably the last bit I'm going to do here is this gray 12,000. And you should be able to get a really nice finish. All along the way, I'm checking to see if there's imperfections because I may have to, if I have a, a line on there, I may have to just stop and do it by hand. Okay, all the scratches have to be removed before we can go to the next step. Remember, you do not want to erase your design. And in this case, I've got some engraving on there. And here you can see after the gray 12,000 polishing paper, you can see it's quite nice and it's got a nice shine to it already. But I'm not done yet. I've got to do a couple more items before I get to the fine buffers. Here's the other example of the other ring that's finished up here. So here we're at the small metal lathe and I'm just going to open the jaws and grab it about halfway there. It's just sticking out. I'm going to do one half at a time. Now when you do tighten up the jaws of the of the chuck, make sure that it doesn't change the shape of your ring. If it has, it means you're over tightening. We can straighten it. If you come and see me, I'll give you a steel mandrel and a plastic hammer. You can see it doesn't wobble. Now I'm going to grab my sanding sponge again. This is the fine one. And I'm just going to polish the outside edge here. Okay, just the outside rim, making sure I don't stick my finger inside. I'm applying pressure here and just rounding that corner. This is the best way to make your ring comfortable and it's pretty well essential. Now, I need to get a couple of wooden mandrels and I'm going to go through here and see what I can find. That one's good enough for that. And I need to find a smaller one. Perfect. Now, I can go to the buffers and start polishing these. The buffers are located at the back of the shop here and we have two different buffers here. They're identical except for the compound that we put on them. This is the green buffer and only green compound gets used on that one. This is the red buffer and this is the fine buffer or the, the one used for the final polish. And this is the red compound used on this one. Don't confuse the two and make sure when you use these that you have protected yourself like wearing eye protection and taking care of loose clothing and long hair. Now I've done a really good job of preparing my pieces with the sandpaper so I've gone right to the fine buffer, the red one. I'm going to apply a little bit of uh, polish on the wheel, just a little bit, and then buff. And as you can see, shiny already. Now with the buffers you want to be checking frequently to see your progress. Um, the harder you push, the faster it polishes. You got to make sure that you're in control. And this one's a pr these are pretty well done here. Yeah. Now the last thing I need to do is remove them off the mandrel. You'll notice that the polishing process leaves a, a, a dark residue on, it, on the surface. And what we have to do is clean them. So I put them in my ultrasonic cleaner here. Turn the switch on and for about 10 minutes it should uh, scrub uh, elect ultrasonically all the nicks and crevices of the, the rings and keep them nice and clean. And if you see the rings here you can see I'm all cleaned up and finished. I like to darken the lettering. Uh, I find that it looks better. And there's a couple of imperfections on these rings but I'm not going to worry about them. Sometimes these rings don't turn out perfect. You can still get a good mark provided you follow these steps. The last thing you need to do is get a mark for your projects. And uh, that can be done by coming up and seeing me. And make sure you keep your handout or your notes back in your journal so that next time you make a band, it'll be quick and easy to do.